Dr. Sam Mielkarski. Welcome to the Urban Pharmacy Podcast. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you for having me. It's a pleasure to be here and uh, I look forward to it from the time that we, we talked about possibly doing it. Yeah, I'm so, so thankful that we met. Um, we met at the Woodstock Fruit Festival just, um, I don't even know, was that last month? Yeah, it was just last month. So super excited that I finally got to meet you. I've seen you um, within like the raw food world um, for a while now. I I was first kind of like opened up to just like macrobiotic eating and like raw food probably like 15 years ago and um, really started following like growing your greens, you know, that YouTube channel, you, your friend, um, that John Kohler. And, um, so yeah, just, I, I've seen you around and I got to finally meet you and you, your presence was pretty much exactly what I expected. It was super calm, <laughs> not to say, not to, not to make you feel like you have to be calm all the time, but I felt like that was who you were going to be. Like you knew exactly kind of who you are. And I feel like you're walking around as a human being with a very strong sense of purpose. And um, we can talk all about that today. But um, before I kind of ask you your story, Dr. Sam, I want to just address your background. Um, this will be going on to my YouTube channel, which I just started. But also for those of you who are listening to this podcast, Sam is sitting on um, a like a wooden patio and he's got some cool kind of tropical looking trees in the background and the sun is about to poke through. Um, it's early autumn where he is down in Georgia. So tell me about what you have growing in the background. Sure. Behind me is uh, all these wonderful trees that I actually planted and that looks like an arboretum around me is actually banana trees and I do get bananas. They are small squatty things and they are somewhat edible they're a little bit starchy so i'm still trying to figure out how i can possibly get them to grow a little bit bigger and sweeter but uh, even if the uh, fruit is not totally edible off the tree the fruits of my labor are still appreciated because this is like a little oasis back here and the beautiful thing is to actually see the result of the seeds you plant so to speak of even consciousness uh, the vision i had for my backyard and when I walk out of my deck, here's what I get to see. And, and that's uh, overgrown right there is actually my garden space too. So it's about 400 square feet of garden space just right there. And then the trees around me, beside the banana trees, there is a persimmon tree back there. There's pineapple guava trees. There are fig trees. There are pawpaw trees. And so it is basically kind of living in a little tropical uh, paradise, so to speak. Uh, and some of the fruits are definitely edible. The figs this year were phenomenal. And oh, they so came jealous. in great before Woodstock, which was great because I'm thinking, wow, if these come in when I'm gone, I guess the birds are going to enjoy them. But I got oh, to man. get figs every day for about three weeks straight. I mean, a bowl like this big <sighs> every day. And there's, as you know, there's nothing like fresh fruit right off a tree. It's literally like being in the garden of Eden. It is incredible there's nothing like it and like i know some people might think that this sounds weird but i don't really care listen there's an energetic vibration to the food that you're eating and the closer to home that you can get it the better it is so that's of course why we sell our produce at the farmer's market like there's just a whole like shift that happens when you actually connect with your food and then take it up a notch like Dr. Sam is. And by the way, I need to talk to you about persimmons and um, pawpaws because I am literally at the moment collecting the seeds as I eat these beautiful fruits here in Indiana. That's like as tropical as we get here. I don't know if figs do well here. I need to look into that, but this year is the year of me going to my friends who planted their trees seven years ago and collecting the seeds. And I will in seven years, hopefully have an amazing orchard of sorts. Uh, well, I mean, we have our apples and our pears and our cherries and you know, it wouldn't be just be an orchard. It will be as tropical as we will get here, here in Indiana. Um, and I will have all of the things. And I love how you, how long ago did you start these, start these banana trees? Uh, it's probably been probably seven years ago, eight years ago. Yeah. 
Okay. Fabulous. Wow. And okay. Let's just, let's now kind of just segue. I got really excited. You mentioned pawpaws and persimmons and I'm like, yes. Okay. We're on the same literal wavelength at this moment. It's great. Um, all right. So Dr. Sam, can you, can you just like, tell me your story? <laughs> I've got all day. Let's just start at the beginning. No, give me, give me kind of your story. Like, have you always lived a healthy, holistic, like life, like you are now, where did it start? And why are you doing what you do? Like sure. living in your purpose? I think it, it basically, it, it did start from the beginning. It started in utero. It started in the womb. And the reason I say that my parents actually were health and science majors in college. Uh, they went to Ithaca College in upstate New York and they were into the health and science field. And so when I was born, actually, I was born with twisted hips. I was born with something called antiverted hips, which is where your femurs rotate inward. So my, I was very pigeon toed. And so they put a brace on me very, very young. And I have a picture there. My mother's holding me like this in her arms and she's got the the, the 70s bell bottom pants on her yeah. she'll take a hippie for sure so that's probably where I get some of the hippiness but uh, she uh is holding me on the porch and my brother's standing next to me I think it's an easter picture but it looks like I'm wearing a little skateboard on my feet and that brace was to help correct my crooked hips mm -hmm. and so basically I realized that at that time um when I looked at the picture wow this started at the beginning and I said to my mother well how did you how did I crawl around? She said, well, you really just army crawled everywhere because you didn't have that cross crawl pattern. So I was like, well, how did I get out of the crib? She said, well, you didn't in the, uh, in the beginning. And, and she's like, cause you couldn't climb out of it. She goes, but I always knew when you're up because you would pick up your, your legs and you'd slam them down on the crib. You're such a determined little kid that you would just move the crib all around the room, no matter where you wanted to go. And she said, as soon as you did that, we knew your father and I were like, Oh, Sammy's up. And uh, cause you would just start banging your legs. And so she told me that story. I was like, wow, I was born a little health raiser. Wow. And that's where I kind of got this whole insight of like, wow, I was born into this lifestyle. So when you said I, I uh, live a life of purpose for sure. I know this is what I came here to do and uh, I live it each day. And that's, that's how I got started. And then okay. growing up, I had my fair share of injuries as an athlete. So I went through the rehabilitation process myself. And then I watched my brother go through it. And uh, even my grandmother, they all went to physical therapy for various things. Mm -hmm. And then it was really when I, uh, it really hit me. I got out of school. I went to physical therapy school and graduated with a, a degree in physical therapy. I got out and I competed in a Mr. Atlanta bodybuilding competition back in 1998. And back then I wasn't as conscious and, and awake. And so a lot of the lifestyle was just working out really hardcore and then eating a diet very high and, and a lot of animal protein. And, and, um, when I think back, it was kind of almost scary. Cause, uh, I remember getting this, um, uh, bag of chicken from this, this big box store and it said in 10% solution, I, mean, I don't even know what that is mm. at this point. Is that like formaldehyde? I mean, I don't know what the stuff was even preserved in, but yeah. All I know is I was eating this stuff and then suffice to say, long story short, I ended up looking pretty well on stage. But when I came out of the, uh, even though, uh, you know, I did well when I came out in the, I wasn't looking good on the inside. And that was evident in the weeks to follow because my health is just this downward spiral really quickly. And I ended up with some significant health challenges, which were um, uh, my prostate got swollen so bad that mm -hmm. I woke up one day and I had to go to the bathroom. So I ran in the bathroom and I went to urinate and nothing came out, not a drop. And yet I felt like I was going like big time. And I'm wow. thinking to myself, where is that going right now? If it's, if it's not coming out of me, it's going somewhere like back up with my kidneys or something. So it was a very, very scary feeling uh, at the time. And I remember thinking, wow, I better go get some help. So I went to a doctor and they were, saying to me they just the guy looked at me and he said oh well you're you're too young i wouldn't worry about it and i remember looking at him say hey doc i didn't say i can't see right i said i can't pee right you know and he just kind of looked at me and so we talked a little bit and he's like well we're not really sure what causes this and and here but i want you to take this antibiotic and i was like well why would i take it if we don't even know the cause and uh so i took the paper from him and i never filled his prescription and so i remember going home and i was like well this isn't a good enough answer so i went and sought out another opinion from another so-called specialist 
And he says, well, you're awful young for these issues. And I'm like, what is up with these guys telling me I'm too young to have issues? Obviously, mm-hmm. I do. So, and then when I went uh, home that day, I was really distraught because he literally said to me, well, well what kind of test do you want me to run? And I'm thinking to myself, if I have to tell you, I'm in the wrong office. Mm-hmm. I, mean, I, I shouldn't be having to tell you what kind of test you need to run. I help me figure out what's wrong with me. So I went home and I was very distraught. And I remember just sitting down on my bed and the tears just started to kind of roll and I was just so frustrated. And I remember just saying the words out loud, God, just please save me. And so then I heard the voice as people say, you hear the voice. I actually mm-hmm. heard the voice is literal divine intervention. And what I heard was what difference does it make what it is? If it's not going to make a difference, how you treat it. And I thought, mm-hmm. this, Oh, what? And I heard it again. What difference does it make? What it is. If it's not going to make a difference, how you treat it. So I asked, well, what does that mean? And I heard, it means you're going to have to change your diet, your mindset, and your lifestyle. And if you do that, you'll know health at a level you never knew possible. And also, here's just as important. You will always, once you get to this place, you will always promise to give back or the lessons are going to get harder. Do we have an understanding? And I was wow. like, yeah, like we're clear. <laughs> so wow. guardian angels, the voice of God directly, but that's how it started. And so Every day I wake up, including this morning, I have my eyes open. I always say it's a good day. I say 10 things I'm grateful for. And then I say the words, I know, I promised I'm getting up now. And so I get out of bed and that's how I start my days. Wow. Okay. Wow. Um, all righty. Hold on. Now let's break it down farther. That was incredible. First off, the voice that you heard was super clear. And that is incredibly powerful and super inspiring. Another thing that is incredibly inspiring, Dr. Sam, is that you said that you wake up and not just say three things, which I've taught my clients to do, but you say 10 things that you're thankful for. Why not just take it to 10, right? Because there's so many things to be thankful for. And the more gratitude that we can have, the better humans I believe we become. So all so powerful. Now you heard this voice. It said that you needed to change your lifestyle, your mindset, and your what? My diet. And your diet. Okay. Yes. All right. So let's address that. What did you do to help your prostate? Was it dietary? Sure. Uh, so a couple of things. One, you made the, you made the list this morning. So I was just lying there. I said, I'm grateful that oh, thank you. Stacey Hine is going to uh, interview me this morning and, and I'm grateful for the opportunity to share with, with her and her audience. So thank you very much. That means and a lot. Um, yeah. And here's the other part of the story that I didn't mention uh, a little bit more detailed. So beside my prostate, I ended up with like a swollen mass in my left um, groin region, which was palpable. Mm. And, wow. uh, So, and then I had all these bumps across my bladder as well. So I'm thinking to myself, wow. And that was the thing where I was getting concerned. Well, what if this is cancer or I have tumors or fibroids? And so again, the, the, the rest of the voice was like, that's just a label. I mean, if you want to live inside labels, you can, but you got to understand as soon as you do that, you invite a lot of consciousness in your life that is going to, you know, be living in fear or living in, in a state of mind where they're going to try to convince you that, Hey, you shouldn't do that. You know, you need to just, you need to just go this route. And that's crazy just to listen to this inner voice and you don't know how, how bad this could be. So uh, there's a lot of challenges there. I mean, it's uh, the, the bumps and the lumps and then, and then the downward spiral into like total social withdrawal and, and even being depressed and just completely apathetic. So yeah, beside the prostate, there's some other things stacked on there. So it, it was basically a, a very low moment, but that's, that's wow. how you, you know, hopefully rise up. So to, to come back to your question uh, of what I did, it was, uh, that's how I kind of got into being a bit more, uh, you know, holistic. And, and even when I graduated, I already had this mindset of, of going down that path, but this was a, a total blessing because I helped you do that. So yeah, yeah I, I basically ended up, going raw so to speak and and the reason i say that is um my path went from 
uh, into vegetarianism and then veganism, then into raw foods. And uh, mm -hmm. but beside the raw food, the other raw materials, as I like to call them, to rebuild my health. And so bodybuilding became bodily building because I realized I had to rebuild myself from the inside out, um, mm. my mind, my body and my spirit. So the raw materials are, are very straightforward things that uh, I have come to uh, embrace. And, and I always say nature gave us these things. And this is something that I always say, well, nature invented it, but I packaged it. And there's a system that I teach. I teach to all my clients called a chain of health system. And the system contains eight essential links. And those links are the following things, food, air, water, light, rest, activity, hygiene, and loving relationships with yourself, others, and the planet. So those are what I call the essential eight. And this is the things that I was guided to do when I said, you'll be shown the way. I realized these are the eight factors. And these are not the optional eight. They're the essential eight mm -hmm. because, because they are essential needs of health and of life. The only thing that's optional is following it. Like we do have free will. We don't have to do it. But, mm -hmm. but those things are so essential that if we don't do them and still expect to be healthy, it, there's a bit of delusion there because mm -hmm. these are the, the requisites of life and of health and no other species tries to do without those things. And, and uh, if they did, they would realize they would suffer. Or if we did that to an animal, like if it was a pet, we deprived it of one of those eight things. And then the pet was acting funny. We would say, we well, are torturing the thing. You know, how do you expect it to behave? But when we do it to ourselves, uh, sometimes we don't realize the consequences until we really see things clearly as they are. So those are things I ended up, I ended up changing for sure. Wow. Okay. <clears throat> okay. I love, I love all of this. We're going to talk about your book too here, but how did you hear about the raw food eating? Where did you hear about that? And sure. why did, was that just like an intuitive, like, I mean, you, I, I did the same thing when, um, I think I probably heard about raw food first before I went, when, it, before I went like plant-based and it took me about a year, like, like you, I went through an evolution. Um, but yeah, how did that all kind of manifest? And when was that? That was like 1998. Yeah. 1998. Yeah. Okay. yeah. It was a while ago. And so what happened was, uh, my brother, uh, who I was living with at the time, uh, we were staying together uh, here in Georgia. He was he was the one who helped me train for bodybuilding competition. He actually was going back to school for chiropractic school. And he said, hey, bro, for what's worth? He goes, I have this teacher who who is really into this, this philosophy, this concept called natural hygiene, which is in essence living in harmony with nature. It's a science of living in harmony with nature. He talks about how, how animals have their native diet and they have their native eco niche and you know they just live they live by kind of these these natural rules and laws and so here's the thing i mean he does consultations with people and, and he's not big in adjusting he's not a traditional chiropractor he doesn't he doesn't he's not going to adjust your spine he's going to talk to you about your diet lifestyle uh and just things that you maybe can do to help improve on that so i went to see this guy he ran some tests uh some lab tests because he had qualified people to to draw blood and do other um, samples of various body fluids and stuff. And he said, uh, yeah, here's, here's what I'm going to recommend that you, uh, you know, consider doing. And so raw food was, was a big part of his philosophy and, and he was way into it. So I, that's where I kind of uh, got started with it. And then fortunately, once I started on the path um, of, you know, learning about that, I started to look in my local community and actually found uh, a raw food support group. And so uh -huh. I go to the meeting and uh, I just in introduced myself and I said, look, I'm new to all this, but I'm open. Mm -hmm. So that's, it's uh, found that little treasure right in my, my backyard, so to speak, in terms of finding a support group. So that, as you know, really helps to, to have support around you and to feel like you're yeah. on the right path. And so I just kept checking in with with spirit like is this the right is this the right path for me and 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 everyone i met it seemed to be always that it was and that's how i i just kept checking in like okay this feels right i just keep feeling my way into it this feels right this feels intuitively the right thing to do and that's that's how the you know the raw food journey started wow okay so it sounded like the doctor you said he your brother said <laughs> he's not going to adjust your spine. He's going to adjust, you know, your diet lifestyle. But I think a good, a fun, like 
mantra or saying for that is like, he, he didn't adjust my spine. He adjusts my, he adjusted my mind, um, Ooh, I like that. you know, like, so it's, I think that when it comes to, and I was listening to a past interview that you've done and you were talking about the power of awareness and like, it's just, you know, dropping in and becoming your best self is so much more than it, it's a, it's so multifaceted, which is why you have the essential eight. And I think it's incredibly important to, to kind of just be aware of that. And, um, and to know that everything isn't going to happen overnight, but if you become aware of what is going on and you just kind of stop for a minute, you can absolutely step into your ideal existence and it's just a really powerful thing. And you're literally like a living and breathing example of it. And it's so inspiring. Okay. So with your dietary change, let's just stick with that for right now. How did things manifest with your issues, urinating, et cetera? Did yeah, everything so dissolve? Uh, yeah. So basically, as I started to, to switch my diet, I, I definitely started feeling better uh, mm -hmm. very pretty quickly, actually, because, uh, again, I wasn't eating. As, as, as you know, as you, I'm sure you teach your clients, it's not just what you eat, it's what you don't eat. That's just as important. Yes. So right when you stop eating, things that were causing pain, you know, inflammation, and I could even say, yeah, pain and inflammation in my body, I, I started to feel better for sure. And, mm -hmm. and you know, the more of it that I ate, uh, in terms of clean food, the better I kept feeling. So that definitely helped, but I, I knew that wasn't the whole piece because mm -hmm. uh, guidance kept telling me like, you know, you're, you're gonna be shown the way. So I figured, well, it can't just be just diet because that is that is a, a bit of a myopic approach. And, and sometimes again, people uh, get too hyper-focused on, on one aspect of health and, and that's okay if it's a kind of, again, that, that that key area that needs to be addressed, but you don't want to let go of the other stuff because mm -hmm. health is a comprehensive thing, as you just alluded to. So you have to, uh, you know, continue to look at the other stuff, but yeah, for sure. I started to notice changes with my diet pretty quickly in terms of how I felt. So I knew it was on the right path. And okay. So one of the, and I, this probably falls within your, I mean, you, you said loving relationships. Um, I teach a pillar called success environment. It's one of the five pillars that I believe embody holistic living. And it has a lot of things that can go within that, like, you know, your physical environment, but then also your social environment. And you were talking about this raw food, uh, sport group that you found. I actually, I found one too, that you totally brought like a flashback memory. I actually went to a few like raw food meetings, um, uh, with a local group here. And I was super, I was like all angry because they were using, um, raw coconut oil in like so many things. And I was like, no, why are you guys doing this? Like I was on a different level. It was kind of different, but, um, it was still really nice to know that there was like so many people that were desiring to live a different way. And, um, they're right there, you know, in my backyard, they're, they're local to me. So how important, and with, along your healing journey and your story, how has your environment changed in terms of your social situation? Like, do you believe that? And did you change your social situation when you kind of started down this path, listening to spirit and really dropping in what I like to call dropping into like into your purpose? Yeah, for sure. I mean, there is a, uh things that changed about my social life, people that I hung out with and, and the uh, places I went. I'll, I'll never forget because in, in 1998, uh, that same year, I was uh, looking forward to feeling better so I could actually just kind of go out again and socialize yeah. and even party a little bit. So I remember being at a, at a, uh, at a, a bar uh, restaurant type of place. And uh, I even remember the name of it and, and where I was. And it was one of these two story things where on the rooftop, you could go and have a drink. So I was drinking uh, beer with a couple of friends. And I remember the taste of it just stopped tasting good to me. And I just didn't feel good. It was uh, just upsetting my stomach. And I set it down. And I'm like, okay, I'm done. And my friend said, Oh, great. You're done. I'm going up. I'll grab you another one. I said, no, mm -hmm. no, I'm done. 
they said, oh, you're done great. Well, you can drive us home tonight then if you stop drinking now. And in that way, you can be designated driver. I said, no, I'm done. I'm not drinking anymore. And he was like, yeah, right. And I said, okay. So I haven't touched alcohol since. And and uh, wow. yeah, so that, that change happened. And then you know, there's certain people that kind of just dropped away a little bit because again, their influence on me was not going to be a positive one. And, and, and even I could, I could uh, deal with a so-called peer pressure, social pressure. It's just more of a matter of it wasn't enjoyable to hang out with them anymore. Right. Right. So I was like, I'm going to stop doing this because this isn't in the direction that I'm moving. I'm, and so, yeah, you, you know, the, the social situation definitely changed and it's, it is that law of, of vibratory attraction where when I, was carrying a different energy about me the the people that i wanted to kind of start to draw into my life just started to show up and i mm -hmm. started to meet other people and then realized wow there is a there is a bigger community around here than i thought about people that are into healthy lifestyle including uh, vegan vegetarian and raw food people so mm -hmm. yeah that that definitely changed and and now it's interesting because as you know, you kind of do this evolution and then what I call the evolution revolution, you go full circle. Now I can hang out with just about anybody. Mm -hmm. I mean, it, I have some limits, like if someone's sitting there smoking right in front of me, I'm not going to stay yeah, there no. in that environment because it's very toxic and I don't do well with that uh, kind of thing. Yeah. But uh, if someone is not totally vegan, I don't just say, well, I'm not going to hang out with you. It's right. because we have lessons to learn from, from people and God works through people in different ways. And so you could be missing one of the greatest opportunities ever. That's just standing right in front of you, but you don't even realize it because you're closed off to uh, that person uh, because you think like you already have had a uh, opinion about them. And I'm actually going to cover this today. I have a newsletter going out later today and it talks about the difference between judge judging versus judgment. And there's a big difference. Mm -hmm. And uh, people say you shouldn't judge. And I say, really? Because I get paid to do that all day long. If I don't judge how somebody's walking, how can I help them get better? So no, we, mm -hmm. so we we're supposed to judge, but being judgmental is a totally different thing. So yeah, that's, um, it's going to be a good, good part of the newsletter going out later today. But anyway, yeah, that's, that's the, the social thing, full, full circle, you know, revolution where now I can hang out with just about anybody, you know, within, within reason, again, as long as not doing anything that I find like, even offensive uh, to the standpoint. And I, I think sometimes people don't look at it this way, but if, if somebody were to take a swing at you and, and they did hit you, you, of course you'd be offended, but you'd also possibly injured. And you say, well, that's just wrong. Like, why would you want to be in that environment? But if somebody does it chemically with cigarette smoke or something else, we, we don't look at it that way, but that is an insult. That's an assault and right. an insult, both. And right. so it's like, I don't care to do that. And part of what you had mentioned about the, the link of love. Yeah. One of the biggest keys to the love link is self-love. And I always try to point this out, like in every chain, there's usually a master link. And so in the chain of health, the master link would be love, because if you don't love yourself enough, you won't do the other seven. So that's totally. kind of where you have to start. Yes. Yeah. It's that worthiness factor. I believe that I believe truly, at least for the majority of women that I have served so far, is that we, including myself, don't hold enough love for ourselves. And we have this block of we aren't worthy, that we are not worthy of creating the life of our dreams or that we aren't worthy of rising up to our maximum potential, or we aren't worthy of living in alignment with our ideal existence. And I really, truly believe it's just that we don't love ourselves enough. And I think it's, you're right. Like literally nothing else can manifest in this holistic health journey. If we are not doing that first prioritizing ourselves, making sure that, you know, and whatever that might be like for me, I teach people just put your legs up the wall for like two minutes every morning. That's all you, that's, that's where you start. Literally. That's it. That's something that small, but like you're reminding yourself, Hey, I am worth it. Right. And that's that self-love component. And I think that there's so many things that probably go within that self-love um, aspect that is super, super powerful. Another thing that you said, that's incredibly powerful. Wow. Like, is that, and just very specifically, because you were mentioning, like, just because somebody might not be vegan or vegetarian, like it does not mean that you can't be right. Like 
you can't associate yourself with them or socialize with them or have them in your life, et cetera. And um, I have so many friends who are not, who, you know, do not eat the way that I eat. And you're very right. I have learned so many things, but something that recently happened was that I had a guest in my society and it was a man and he does breath work and he's very good at it and very gifted. And after the session, I was incredibly open to having a conversation with him, um, just fully and honest, honestly. And he asked me what came up and, um, I had a very like vulnerable state. And I was just like, let me tell you what came up. And what came up was the fact that he promotes eating animals. Um, he's very much in a holistic, the, the holistic realm. And like, I respect him in so many ways. And, but we just had this great conversation after it. And, um, it was so like respectful. Um, both of us were just exchanging such respect for each other. And, um, I was just explaining how to him, how I didn't understand it and stuff like that. And he was so, um, receptive and it was just beautiful. And he's just such a gift in my life. And I think that's really important for us, especially in this time, Sam, like in this world, we're very divided and we need to, we need to focus a lot more on love. So that was really, really powerful. And I'm glad that you brought that point up that we don't have to agree on everything because we could be missing out on so many lessons. So sure. that's incredible. Um, okay. Jeez. I feel like you have so many lessons that I could learn from you. We will have to have you back on the podcast, but, sure. um, all right. Since we've been talking about food today, I want to talk a little bit more about it. Are you living raw now? Yeah. Yeah. You've been fully raw for a long time, right? Yeah. Yeah. I always like to say like, uh, I've been hundred percent raw, like 99 point something percent of the time. You know, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I ran a few experiments along the way and just yeah. to see yeah. and, and what would happen. And I got to be honest, like with, with some of the experiments tried, you know, bits of cooked food and stuff, I, I really didn't feel bad. I know some people say, oh, I felt terrible. Mm -hmm. And then you ask them what they ate though. And then they tell you, it's usually things that are laden with salt and oil and all that. Yeah. Well, no wonder why you felt bad. I mean, I just tried to uh, had some steamed veggies or things like sweet potatoes or, you mm -hmm. know, I mm -hmm. felt absolutely fine. But I was like, yeah. I want to know for a couple of reasons, like, you know, could I thrive on that food? What if I need to thrive on that food? And yeah. am, am I missing something by not having that food? So mm -hmm. experiments mm -hmm. were worth running. And, and I, I got to say, I felt fine. Uh, and I, and I did it, you know, I think for a long enough period of time. And, um, so it, it's, it's an experiment that I think was worth running, but I, my preference now, you know, continues to be raw food, uh, because like, say, if you want to feel whole, natural and alive, it makes sense to eat whole natural and living foods mm -hmm, right? mm -hmm, and also yes. if, if there's not going to be life in your food then why have food in your life you know it's another expression yeah there, right? i love that it, it's yeah it's it's this this um raw foods bring about a lot of vitality you know all these these natural foods have these signatures to them which is a doublet word which means sign of nature it's so literally these signature patterns these energies even consciousness i think food is is beyond just nourishment it is it is information and mm -hmm. so the more pure that we can, we can get this information. It's literally get, taking divine downloads every day yes. from, from source and, and ingesting them so that we have this, this uh, programming that's going on, that's programming ourselves uh, with lots of, lots of beautiful information, especially light. Light is a very under, underrated nutrient. Uh, we could mm -hmm. talk for hours about that and maybe we can a little bit yeah. more, but, uh, but when you think about raw foods are, they're, they're literally like a, the spectrum and they are they are like uh those fractals of, of of full spectrum light right so you break it down in different frequencies each thing having a different physiological psychological uh, even biopsychosocial effect on on the on the body mind spirit and it's really important so my preference is, is raw food for sure and, and to uh, just it's it's uh, very simple in many ways and and, and yeah. very uh, rewarding can you tell me about the simplicity? Can you tell me what a day in the life looks like right now? Cause I'm sure it's been such a different, like, you know, like you say, like you're doing experience, like experiments, like consistently, like how, you know, what makes you feel the best? Do you eat differently since you're in Georgia? Um, are you eating differently with the seasons? Um, are you trying to source, you know, as local as possible? Like, how does it look 
what does the food situation look like at Dr. Sam's place? Sure. I mean, I, I said I grow some of my own food, so I, I do eat from my land. And then, yeah, I try to buy from local farmers as well. There's some local farmers markets even right here in my hometown that, that are like on Thursdays or Saturday mornings. And so I met some of the, the local growers. I talked to them about about their practices and then also just kind of get to know them energetically. And so I got yeah. some good relationships with them. And I try to, I definitely do try to eat seasonally. And, and I think there's a lot of wisdom in that in nature, mm -hmm. again, providing this information with here's what you're going to need to thrive during the season. If you eat out of season, you're almost working against the divine plan and nature's plan. And that's why I think some people struggle on all diets, but even, even in the raw food lifestyle, because they're continuing to try to eat foods out of season that are not going to be necessarily nourishing them the best and, and providing mm -hmm. all the, uh, all the nourishment that they need. But yeah, mm -hmm. sometimes uh, I'm just eating like twice a day uh, very mm -hmm. often. And, and those meals uh, definitely contain a lot of fruit and, and veggies, but I, I do like my, my nuts and seeds and, and other things, sprouted foods. And uh, I, I do think that, uh, you know, living foods are just as important as the raw food. So I like things like sprouted uh, lentils or, mm -hmm. or beans or, you know, even soaking sprouting nuts and seeds. And uh, mm -hmm. I'm a big fan of that uh, because I think of the classes of foods, you're going to have like fruits and veggies and nuts and seeds and sprouts, legumes and tubers and herbs and grasses and grains and wild edibles. I think they're all important. Yeah. Um, you know, it's a, it's a full on spectrum plant-based diet that is, that is not just very limited. I think the more we limit ourselves, you, you are limiting your, your possibilities of actually being healthy and mm -hmm. it's vitally important to, to get a wide spectrum of foods. So I just, uh, I eat, uh, basically I let the foods choose me. I mean, I always shop and I'm always, I always say I'm always a couple steps ahead. So I, uh, I will, I will buy a bunch of stuff, um, during the week or toward the end of the week and then go into, uh, you know, into the weekends already stocked up. Like last Thursday, I went and stocked up on a bunch of stuff that way in the weekend. I'm not stressed about trying to get food or find it. I already have it. Uh, mm -hmm. one of the uh, fun experiences over the weekend was I really wanted to make juice but I really wanted to be outside. And so I just closed my eyes and it's like, all right, we'll go get your juicer, man, and bring it out here. So I came out on the deck and, and uh, yeah. I put my juicer out on the, uh, on the glass table and uh, I lined up, saw a bunch of pineapples and celery and cucumbers and cilantro and parsley and uh, just started juicing um, things. And, and uh, yeah. it's amazing to, because now I feel like you have all the other elements going into your juice. There's the sun, there's the air, there's, mm, there's the mm. essence of earth, the ether. I mean, everything, it's, it's like all the elements at once and the food's almost returning back home, right? Where it came yes. from. Like now you're outside, the food's in its natural environment. I, I'm in my natural environment. And so it was, a, it was a great experience. It just was a whole different kind of juicing experience. I'm like, well, I'm gonna have to do this more often. Just juice outside. Oh and my God. So it was fun. It's huge. Yeah. I found this, these gallon, uh, gallon mason jars. So the oh, mason jars, cool. a gallon, it's so awesome because then I, I made that much. So it's, yeah. I got done. I went and stuck it in the fridge. I, I, I had a couple, um, you know, uh, quartz uh, yesterday and I planned to, to drink off it, you know, during the week and then I'll make another batch and mm -hmm. it's, uh, it's nice, you know, and, awesome. and, and beside that, so you have those whole natural foods there and sometimes I'll have whole turmeric or ginger juice with it. But if mm -hmm. I don't, I may add some of the, I know you're big into herbs and I'll add some things in. So I have turmeric ground powder or ginger powder. It's organic stuff. Yeah. And, and I like to add that or things like spirulina or, or barley grass juice powder mm -hmm. or, you know, something like that. Mm -hmm. Vitally important uh, to get that spectrum of, of nutrients. So mm -hmm. that's how I like to, I like to do stuff, you know, mm -hmm. and it just intuitively, okay, what am I feeling? Um, yeah. You know, and I like to eat in sequence. Uh, I know people like to do mono meals. I, I do poly meals. <laughs> okay. Um, okay. Yeah, I, I believe in poly meals, and so poly meals are are uh, are eating in sequential order, which uh, I like to do. So I start with very, you know, juicy uh, things, or even mm -hmm. liquid type stuff first, and then I just move to more concentrated food. So I'm usually yeah. ending my meals with the most dense concentrated food, like nuts or seeds, or something heavier like avocado or. And uh, it's funny because people, even at Woodstock in several years, people will see my bowl and are like, you can't eat that together. And blah, blah. they get yeah. all militant. And I'm like, well, I could do whatever I want. And, uh, yeah. <laughs> but I said, well, I don't plan to eat it together. I said, I'm going to eat it all, but it's going to be in a sequence. And I'm probably actually not going to eat it all even right now. Mm -hmm. And I said, so I know what you're thinking. Well, what a waste. It's not a waste. I actually have a refrigerator in my room. I've, I've been doing this festival for 11 years straight. I kind of got it down to a size. Yeah. 
So I, I took the bowl back to my room very often and, and that allowed me to, to always have what I know that I wanted uh, mm -hmm. even later. So I remember yes. one time, a very limited time to eat at lunch and uh, I connected with um, Philip and he was about to go teach, you know, something with a, with a, either handstands or athletics or something that he was doing. And, and I said, Oh, not much time. He goes, yeah, I know. And so I said, well, this will be dinner. And sure enough. So later on we had met back up on the lawn, him and I, and I was like, well, here's lunch. That's dinner. And uh, yeah. he's laughing. He's like, wow, you actually, you did save. And I said, Oh yeah, I wasn't kidding. And I had all the mame sapote in there oh, so the figs. And, 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 the, and the strategy there was like, I knew it wasn't going to be available later because they don't right. serve everything the same all day long. So so it's like always planning and always thinking ahead. And it's vitally important. So that's the other the other part of eating. But uh, yeah. definitely getting this, the, the, the spectrum of foods, you know, lots of fruits and vegetables, like I said, and then and then all that other stuff stacked on it. But done in a sequence and done with love. And the other thing is just uh, the other thing you said, kind of describe what a day looks like for me. Actually eating in silence. I mean, out here on the deck is one of my favorite places to eat because it's not total silence, but no podcast, no music no no nobody talking to me i just want to sit and be present with my food and that that's a tough thing to do believe it or not for a lot of people mm -hmm. including myself for a while because i'm like yeah but i'm missing out i'm missing out. i really want to hear that podcast well then listen to the podcast and like yeah. if you really want to do that then do that but don't try to do both because your, your, your nervous system only has so much capacity and it's like your vagus nerve you know as, as you know it's this this very important cyst, you know part of the the parasympathetic nervous system that's like rest and digest you cannot be absorbing information from like your ears taking in all that information from the podcast and you're trying to digest your food. It isn't going to happen. That's why most of the time you miss out on the essence of a meal. When you do that, you're like, you're eating, you're eating and you're like listening. You're like, Oh, that's such a good point. You're taking notes. And then you get done. You're like, oh, wow, wow. The food's gone. Like you yeah. almost miss the experience. And I've noticed that if I, if I just eat with total mindfulness, like I always know when to stop. I, I don't overeat. Mm -hmm. I don't regret what I've eaten. If something's not quite right, I'm like, oh, this isn't really calling to me. I put it aside to go get something else. But when yeah. you're distracted, that it's really hard to do that. And I, I think part of uh, part of you know living in a kind of raw lifestyle is really taking things to a raw level where you're like, I just want to be present. You know, with anything you do in your life, but but definitely with eating, for sure. Uh, mm -hmm. I think it's a vitally important thing. It's it's nourishment. Uh, on all levels, like yes. body, mind, and spirit. Totally. And speaking of mind, body, and spirit, here's the last question that I have for you because I ask every guest this, what does holistic living mean to you? Yeah. Um, it, it's funny you say that. I, I have an acronym for love that uh, it's actually, uh, I think it's a, a blog post that I did on a website, but uh, I saw it the other day when I reread it, I was like, yeah, that's it's great. So holistic living, the love formula, L-O-V-E, it stands for a lot of things. Like one, it's your level of vital energy. So that's, that's the whole piece about like living in a space of love. But love stands for this. It says live, uh, op you know, fully and openly, mm -hmm. okay, is the L. And then the O is own your choices and be accountable. The V is vow to take excellent care for yourself. And the E is to evolve and, and keep growing. Mm -hmm. So that's what a holistic life means to me. It's that that love formula because uh, if you want you want a whole life, you have to live holistically. Yeah. <laughs> and, and yeah, it's really important to, to, to come from it from that standpoint with a kind of a multifaceted approach. But for sure, um, holistic living and, and spirituality me go hand in hand. And, and here's what I had said uh, at Woodstock, and I've said this in, in years past and, and even to private clients. To me, spirituality is nothing more than... Uh, taking full ownership for what you create in your life from moment to moment. So mm -hmm. all the practices that we have, be it Qigong or yoga or breath work or sound work or journaling or art or whatever else people do as a spiritual practice is hopefully going to turn you into that person, right? Mm -hmm. it's, it's not It's not an escape. Your spiritual practice should not be an escape. Like if you want to travel to ethers, that's all well and good. But the whole point of going there is to get the divine downloads you need to bring them back to the earth plane so that mm -hmm. you can be of service to other people. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and I, I really honestly believe a very simple lifestyle, a simple life philosophy is that there's two reasons to be here, to have fun and to be of loving service to others. And so, you know, to live a holistic lifestyle is, is simply that. And, and the spiritual practices really should just evolve that aspect, you know, those two aspects. Like one, it should be fun. And two, it should allow you to be of loving service. And so when we 
we quote astral travel, we go out there to the ethers, hopefully it's to, to get these divine downloads to come back into ourselves and like, wow, what a great idea. I can't wait to, to bring that into fruition. And the word manifest actually means to create uh, the, the, the direct derivation is almost to create with your hands to manifest. Mm -hmm. And so, yeah. And so when we, we do that, it, it's an amazing thing to, to bring those gifts to the, uh, you know, to the, to the back, to the earth plane. So we can yeah. show people. So that's what holistic living is to me. Wow. I need to look more into that acronym, that love acronym. And I want to, I want to teach that and tag you. Um, that's an amazing, that's amazing. Okay. Dr. Sam, how do we stay in touch with you? And you have a book. Yep. Tell us where we can get that. Feel good now. Sure. Yeah. So my main website is drsampt.com. That's D-R-S-A-M-P-T, like physical therapist. So drsampt.com. That is my main website. I have a couple free gifts uh, on that site. Um, people want to go and join my uh, main mailing list. So you'll get a free copy of my song called the Health Razor Song, which is a uh, that's like a lyrical uh, kind of expression of my journey. And uh, the, the lyrics of that song are very powerful. Uh, it's kind of a hip hop rap song, feel good song. And even if you don't like that music, trust me, you'll like this song because it's very clean. There's no sexual innuendos. There's nothing. There's, there's, there's no bad language. It's, it's very straightforward. And I actually wrote all the lyrics to that song. Uh, I'm very proud of that. And uh, cause that was a divine download as well. And and then I had to produce, and that's a, a story for another day. And that was an amazing journey. But yeah, the book is called Feel Good Now, and it looks like this. So if you want to grab it, you can get it off Amazon. Uh, it, it's available there. And then I got another one coming real soon that is going to be the next edition of this one uh, that I, I might have mentioned to you at Woodstock. This is this is uh, being rewritten right now. It's being proofread, and I'm excited. It's an actual, basically, it's it's going to be a a guide to health, healing, and total well-being, and basically. A, a comprehensive approach to feeling better and healing faster. And wow. uh, it's, yeah, it's awesome. It's got lo natural laws of healing, principles of, of uh, rehabilitation, and then a whole Q&A section, and then uh, of some tools and resources that help people just optimize uh, that. So I'm really excited about that and some other big projects coming too. So, but that's how to, that's how to stay in touch. And, and I hope to definitely connect with some of your audience and, and be able oh, to- for sure. That. Definitely Absolutely. Works. I think that we can definitely work together in the future. I'm super excited. I am just so excited that we met and I'm really thankful for your time today. And um, I really, really just honor and respect you so much. So thank you so much for doing what you do, Dr. Sam. You're incredible. And thank you. Thanks a lot, Stacey. Yeah, much love. It looks like we're both heading to physical therapy now. <laughs> yes, right. You're going to probably treat for sure. Yep. And I'm going to go Get, get treated. My shoulder fixed. So yeah, awesome. Thank you. Be well. Take care. You too. Much love.